All right, big day for oil and for any oil bulls out there. Well done if you've been long oil. It's on an absolute tear today. You can see it on screen here, the chart has been pushing through the high from last week, that's the, around the 2019 highs. And that's from speculation coming out from the OPEC meeting. Now, by the time you watch this video, the announcement from the OPEC meeting may already be out, but so far information has just been leaking from the meeting. It's about 5 p.m. UK time. And throughout the day, it's been seeming that it's looking like a best case scenario for anyone that's bullish oil. As we said in previous videos, the future price moves, at least over the short term for oil, were going to depend a lot on the outcome of this meeting. And so far, what we're hearing is that Saudi Arabia may extend their voluntary cuts throughout April if other overproducers also make up for their shortfalls. And for OPEC as a whole, it seems that oil output will stay unchanged throughout April before those production cuts are tapered off. So we'll update you on the new picture once things become clearer, because obviously this changes the picture overall. But in the meantime, let's take a look at some of the other things that have been going on today. One of the big movers in terms of the markets that I follow was the yen, this US dollar yen that we can see here. We can see that there's been a buildup of bullish structure over the past couple of months after a sustained bearish move, uh, but today has really picked up steam. So let's look at some of the data that's been coming out throughout the day. First up this morning, we had data from Europe, the Eurozone, we had retail sales and unemployment data. And starting with retail sales, the data was a bit on the disappointing side. It came in five percentage points below consensus. So that's now the biggest decline in nine months. And you might think, well, it's kind of expected really. Of course, the blame goes to the lockdowns and curfews and the big economies of Germany, France, Spain. And in fact, for any Germans watching, I'm sure you were excited about coming out of lockdown, but recent data has shown that new cases of the virus have increased by 9% in Europe, and those lockdowns are now being extended. Now, obviously, if lockdowns are being extended, it's going to continue being a burden on the economy, and especially for things like retail sales. So it's no surprise that data is not coming in exactly the most positive. But despite that, there is in a separate data release a bit of a silver lining, which is with unemployment data, which actually declined ever so slightly to 8.1%. So there you go, some positive things for you. Now, if we take a quick look at the euro, we can see it has been a little bit down today, but nothing major. You know, the, the data release that we saw coming out didn't really move the needle that much. Now, there was also other jobs data coming out today. That was jobless claims in the US, which increased. So that's obviously not the most positive sign for the US labor market. However, again, it's kind of expected. The biggest increase came from Texas, which isn't so surprising considering the extreme weather conditions they've had there recently. Now, something to keep in mind is that today's jobless claims aren't actually very relevant to tomorrow's NFP report, non-farm payrolls, which is the big one. So sorry to say for any of you Nostradamuses out there trying to use the data from today to make a prediction about what's going to happen tomorrow, it's not going to be so important for you. But if you do want a heads up on what could happen with NFP tomorrow, we'll be covering it in a separate video. So keep an eye out for that. If you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure that you are. We also have a Jerome Powell speech later today. He's obviously the chair of the Federal Reserve. I'm sure he'll probably touch upon the rising yields in the bond market. You know, is the Fed doing anything about it? Are they concerned or are they happy to let yields rise? Things have calmed down a bit since last week when things were a bit crazy with bond yields, but there's a lot of talk about the real issues at play in the bond market, particularly to do with liquidity at the important moments. Banks have been lobbying heavily for an extension to the easing of capital requirements, but Elizabeth Warren so far isn't having any of it. So let me know what markets you've been trading today or this week. Have you picked up any of the big moves in the yen or oil? Let me know and let me know what events you're keeping an eye on and I'll see you in our NFP video. Thanks for watching.